Hello, Grace Church family. Welcome to Monday, a new devotional. I don't know about you, but I am pretty thankful for the many opportunities that COVID is presenting. Um, and I'm specifically thinking of the things that have become available free online. And I'm also feeling pretty blessed that I, um, you know, to have time to uh, commit to that, to uh, be able to, to to do some of these things. And so I just wanted to uh, tell you about uh, this workshop that I am in the process of doing and it's about learning the inductive method of Bible study and it's being uh, put on by Precept Ministries. Many of you will probably recognize that name but I'm pretty blown away because um, like I said I've never done this before and uh, you know to recognize what you can glean from it by by reading the text observing it and there's much more to the process which I'm not going to get into but um, needless to say um, it really pulls a lot of a lot of information out of it uh, that then you can take and apply to your own life and so um, that has just gotten me pretty excited and I wanted to share that with you and um, uh, you know I'm not going to uh, or I should say uh, we just finished looking at the book of Jonah and I am not going to read that to you this morning but I would encourage you to go back and look at it but even more I would encourage you to uh, join the free online study which uh, the next one is happening in August and so you can go to Preset Ministries to do that so just a little plug for Preset Ministries okay anyways um, I think we can pretty much say for most of us who are believers that we have some knowledge and understanding of the book of Jonah and um, um, I'm just going to kind of go over chapter 1 and chapter 2 just to kind of give you that overlay uh, after digging into it and I thought I would uh, do that today and then finish up next Monday so let me just begin by starting with uh, chapter 1 verse 1 where the word of the Lord com comes to Jonah who is a prophet and he is to go to the city of Nineveh and cry against it for their wickedness has come before the Lord but he is disobedient and he decides to run as far west as from the east to be to flee from the presence of the Lord he doesn't want to do it he doesn't want to do what the Lord is asking him to do and as well for emphasis there are uh, the text shares two additional times that show uh, talk about Jonah fleeing from the presence of the Lord so that you understand that this is important so how many times have you been uh, have you known in your heart you've been convicted in your heart that God is asking you to do something but you decide you're going to flee in disobedience from doing it we've all done that haven't we um, we can totally relate to what Jonah has done regardless of the rationale behind our actions and um, I always think about this whole running away hiding um, because at, in the moment it's what we tend what we do but when you think about it where can you run or hide from God he is everywhere and so that's just crazy isn't it and so we can all see those times right in our past and it's important to recognize um, and be aware of our disobedience in the here and now as well as in uh, you know in the days ahead because uh, we follow you know very similar patterns this is this is the kind of thing that we do as humans but we don't have to um, so let's continue in uh, Jonah's disobedience God um, who is a God of action uh, does a couple of things so in verse 4 the Lord hurled a great wind and there was a great storm on the sea and the ship that Jonah was on with others is definitely in great peril and the storm gets worse as you read on in verse 17 the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah after he was thrown into the sea 
and he ended up staying in the fish's belly for three days and three nights. It's also important to note that in verse 12, um, Jonah knew it was because of him that the storm had happened and he told the sailors to throw him overboard and then if they did that the sea would become calm. So as you can see these are the consequences of Jonah's disobedience. Can you see back to the consequences that came from your own acts of disobedience, those times when you said no to what God wanted you to do? I'm sure uh, you can, and I know that I can, and I certainly didn't like any of them. So again, we can totally relate to Jonah and, and his situation. However, as much as we can look back on past disobedience, it's important to realize this for the present as well as for the future. And also, did you notice that consequences don't just affect you, they affect others. And that is pretty significant because oftentimes we think that we do things in isolation, not realizing that it will have an ultimate effect on others around us. So while Jonah is in the belly of the fish, he prays in his time of great distress. The way he prays is praying. He knows he's in trouble for sure, but he also knows who God is and he remembers the Lord. He also voices his thanksgiving and acknowledges that salvation is from the Lord. Then God, again, our God who is about action and activity, hears his prayer and answers it. And in chapter 2, uh, verse 10, the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah up onto dry land. Again, a lesson for us that God hears our prayers and he knows our hearts and answers our prayers his way. Once again, I am sure you can relate your, to, um, from your own experiences that God heard your prayer and answered it. Maybe some prayers are still being prayed and have yet to be an answered, but be encouraged. God has shown his faithfulness in the prayers that he has already answered and an answer will come the win is up to him. So the takeaways, the things that we, uh, you know, can glean from the book of Jonah and apply to our lives, I believe are these. First, to sum up, disobedience brings bad consequences to yourself and others around you. Secondly, there is no place to run or hide from God. He is everywhere. Thirdly, God is in control. He appoints, he commands. And fourth, lastly, God hears and answers prayer. So far, this account that we've been talking about here tells us what happens in Jonah's disobedience. And I can't wait to share with you next Monday the balance of um, what can be gleaned from the rest of the book of Jonah. So do you see how clearly this account uh, speaks into our lives? for our todays and our tomorrows. Even during COVID, we are tempted to do what we want. And I hope that you will think, think about these four things and get right with God and decide that you would rather not be a Jonah. So God bless you, be encouraged. God, you know, God uh, hears our prayers and answers them. And I pray that you will uh, do that today. Okay, so God bless you. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Bye for now.